Welcome to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. This episode, we're going to be talking about the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act. Before we start to talk about what wilderness is and why we need to protect it, let's take a look at a short movie, a silent movie, about America's wilderness. We are the Junior Black Chamber of Commerce, an organization that's creating the business leaders of tomorrow. Catch our new television series, Harambe 101, on Green Time TV. We want to thank all the business professionals who gave up their time mentoring what promises to be the next generation of movers and shakers. You too can help save the future of our underserved communities by supporting the Junior Black Chamber of Commerce with your charitable contributions. And remember, what you give today will help make a brighter future tomorrow. Send your donations to the JBCC at P.O. Box 35257, St. Louis, Missouri, 63135. The Sierra Club is the largest and most influential grassroots environmental organization in the United States. If you care about clean air, clean water, and preserving open space, join the Sierra Club. In Missouri, the Sierra Club's projects include promoting energy efficiency and clean power sources like wind and solar cleaning up air pollution by retiring dirty, outdated, coal-fired power plants, protecting Missouri's parks like the Ozark National Scenic Riverways. We need you to get more involved. To join the Sierra Club, make a donation, or to find out about Sierra Club events in your area, visit our website at www.missouri.sierraclub.org or call us at 314-644-1011. Welcome back to Green Time. We just saw some fabulous footage of what America's wilderness looks like in some of our uh, national parks. Uh, my, my name is Don Fitz. I'm host of Green Time. And with me, I have a couple of folks who have really thought about the issue of America's wilderness and Missouri's wilderness. I have Tony Armstrong uh, and I have Richard Spiner. Both of you are with the Sierra Club. 
and both of you have worked on issues of Alaska wilderness. Correct. Correct. Uh, and, well, it's fantastic to have you here. Uh, well, first of all, the, one thing which a lot of people not, might not be aware of is what do you mean by the word wilderness? So wilderness, it's land that's already uh, belongs to the federal government and it's a special designation that gets some extra protection. Um, mm -hmm. There are areas that uh, where man spends little time, so there's no structures, mm -hmm. and um, they're usually a minimum acreage, and they're usually places that have special value because they have had little impact from man, and they're usually extraordinarily beautiful. And so um, America's wilderness areas are something which is really nice to go through and to, oh, yeah. and, and to take a look at. Now, yeah. now, how can you use a wilderness area? Do you, do you go out and start an uh, ATV company? And, and, and rent as many ATVs as you can? Uh, what would you do to well, enjoy wilderness? Actually, the nice thing about this is these areas have been, been undeveloped. Mm -hmm. And so staying undeveloped, you can hike in, you can uh, horseback ride in them, uh, you can fish in them. You know, so, so it's not illegal to go fishing in the wilderness no. areas? No, or hunting. Mm -hmm. Or hunting. Okay, so you, you, yes. you can go hunting. Yeah, I mean, you have, to, you have to obey the um, rules around seasons for hunting, mm -hmm. but other than that, no, hunting's totally open. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, it's been said that the hunting has improved dramatically in these areas once they were open as wilderness. Less mm -hmm. impact from man, they have uh, a greater uh, you know, propensity to have more wildlife. Yeah. Oh, so they're, since they're more protected, they're, they're actually damaged less from being uh, designated right. a wilderness area, even mm -hmm. though people can hunt and fish and yeah. hike and, and do all sorts of things in them. Can you camp? Can you put up a tent and yes. stay overnight? Yes. Okay, so no the, permanent structure. But, uh, but a tent, and they want the groups to be fairly small. They want the groups of 10 or less people. Okay, so you can't bring a whole lodge of people. You can't bring 50 or 100 people out. No. But, but, no. You, but bringing a few people out is fine. Mm -hmm. Now, the images that we saw were images largely of the U.S. Now, does that mean that there aren't any wilderness areas in Missouri? Are there any places that people can go without leaving the state of Missouri? Well, we're wonderfully have eight wilderness areas in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent two years photographing these wilderness areas recently, and uh, some of them we had not been to before. Well, most of them we hadn't been to. That's true. And, and so uh, the, the photographs, are the photographs up anywhere for, for people to see, or is that something that you're working on now? Well, it was at the Missouri History Museum through okay. January and mm -hmm. uh, 5th, and then it went to uh, the, the DNR Center in Jefferson City. Okay, these it's are now, not, okay, in 2014, they were yeah. up in J January and February. And they're okay. now at uh, the University of Missouri. Okay. Uh, so, Natural Resources Building, and they'll go to Kansas City after that. Okay, so, so the photographs, the photo essay, we could say, of Missouri's natural areas, the wilderness areas, uh, have been making the tours in early 2014. Well, actually the whole, hmm. whole year, because then after oh, Kansas okay. City, then they go, the Forest Service, so uh, seven of the eight wilderness areas um, are administered by the U.S. Um, Forest Service. So they've got the exhibit for uh, two months, and then it goes to um, Kirksville, and goes back to the Forest Service, and then ends up in Springfield, Missouri. Okay. Now, wh what are some of the uh, impacts that you think that th this, this display would have? What are you hoping for? Well, it's really been incredible to watch people when they go through the display because they said we've never didn't realize at all that we have these kind of beautiful areas in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about it was they said, we're going to have to visit them. Yeah. And so if the exhibit does that, then we really cops a lot because we, we've generated an interest in our wilderness areas and people are going to go out and use those wilderness areas because they're all ours and that's what we really want to have happen. Now, I don't know how many people had stopped and, and told me, said, we didn't know Missouri had wilderness areas because everybody really? thinks of them as being out west. Uh -huh. and. Uh, yeah, that, 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 I mean, I, I certainly have gone to wilderness areas in the West, and I really, mm -hmm. there's some f absolutely fabulous areas, but it's so nice to know that we have some here. Yes. And I, I know in one of the photographs that you have, it's of someone holding up a large fish. What kind of fish is that? that that's a, is that a sturgeon? Well, not, not uh, in our wilderness areas here. They didn't have any sturgeon. In okay, what, so I, I don't know fish well, so what, what kind, do you remember what kind it was? Well, the fish that we saw on these trips were bass and uh, trout okay. in different streams. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and so there, there are a, a lot of fish in the natural areas. And, and, and where, are there places in Missouri that you could go fishing? Yes, in, the, two, the two areas, the two areas that we visited in our, our wilderness areas uh -huh. is one is in the Irish wilderness area, okay. which is the, uh, 
river along there is uh, the Eleven Point, Eleven Point River. river. Basically, Eleven. forms the western boundary of the Irish wilderness. Okay, the, uh, right. the, the Irish. So that is in south central Missouri. Do I have that correct? Right? Correct. Correct. Okay. And the other is Mingo wilderness okay. area. And I'm not familiar it's with down Mingo. In southeast Missouri. Down near okay. Lake Wapapello. Okay. Uh, I'm not familiar with that at all. Interesting enough, it's mm. like the Everglades, and it's mm. a, it's a, a you know, a very wet area, kind of mm. a swamp area, mm. that all of southern Missouri used to be, and it's been one of those areas that's been preserved, that uh, we can enjoy what was here originally. Really? So, so, so south, uh, southeastern Missouri, you say, used to be a swamp area? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then what happened? Well, the farmers went in there, and they put ditches in, and they drained the mm. water out so they grow cotton in that area. Okay. So there's also all these beautiful cypress trees and oh, with all really? the knees and so you feel like that you could be in Louisiana in the swamps and you're paddling around in Missouri. You know, and mm -hmm. it's got the wildlife to go with it, prolific for birds. Um, it's got muskrat and beaver and river otter and so. I never, it, it's called Mingo? Mingo. Mingo. And it's southeast Missouri. Yes, it's, and this is the one that belongs to the, um, instead of, it belongs to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So it's a wildlife refuge and within that refuge they have a wilderness area. Not very, not very far from Lake Wapapello. Wapapello, okay. okay. And, and is this near uh, the Boot Hill? Yes, it is in the Boot Hill. Oh, it's, it's in the Boot Hill. Uh, Mingo. Well, I really need to look that yeah. up because I, I never knew that that existed. Yeah. And I, um, you know, it sounds absolutely fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. And catch it, it during the f uh, spring or fall migration with the birds going through. It's, it's even more spectacular. Oh, oh so, so the spring or fall, the, the summer is when you might enjoy going camping the most, but for a day trip, spring or fall might be yes. very good yeah. because you can see the migration a, mm -hmm. uh, a yes. lot better. Yeah. Okay. Um, and tell me, what are there any places that are near that are closer to St. Louis than the Boot Hill, or most of them a, a good drive from St. Louis? Probably Bell Mountain's the closest. Bell, Bell, Mount, Bell okay. Mountain Wilderness, and it's in Iron County, okay. so not too far from Ironton. Okay, okay. So less than two hours from St. Louis, okay. um, and then also probably um, Rock Pile Mountain. Yes. It's maybe a little bit further, but maybe about <clears throat> two hours. Okay. Well, well, let me ask you about Bell Mountain. I've heard of that. I don't know that I've ever been. If you went to Bell Mountain, what would you be likely to see? Well, you, what you want to do is you want to get to the top of the mountain. Okay. And the views from the top of the mountain. Fantastic. So, uh, and you're looking out over the Ozarks. So, you know, if you like views of, you know, beautiful rolling hills, so in the spring they've got, oh, just a, a gorgeous color of green. It's almost like the mountains have been painted with the green. And if you go in the fall, mm -hmm. then you're going to have the beautiful uh, fall foliage. Okay, and so it sounds like one of the big advantages of the Bell Mountain area is that you get a chance to go hiking, you get a chance to go to the top of the mountain, yeah. and you get the chance to look out over and, uh, and see a, a whole lot of Missouri. Yes. Uh, Wonderful from, vistas. Yes. Uh, very nice views. And about how long did it, okay, it's about a two-hour drive, and you park your car, and about how long do you think it takes to, to hike to the top? top of the mountain, about an hour hike, a two mm, hour hike? It depends, there's two trailheads, so it okay. depends on the trailhead you take. If you take the northernmost trailhead, um, it's about three miles into the top of the mountain. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. so that's that's not a, a, yeah. a long hike at all. No. So it's not, I know that some of the places I go to, the, they'll say this hike is 10 or 15 miles, yeah. and I think, well, that's that's quite a trek there. Yeah. But, so but you, could, you could do that, because there's a big loop trail, okay. um, and so I know a number of people who like to go into that area and backpack. Right, so, so you're going to have to spend the night in there if you do the do the loop trail. Yeah. Okay. But you can go in and out uh, three miles in and three miles out. Yeah. It makes a, it makes a wonderful day trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, 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 so it's a, it sounds like this is a really nice d way to spend a day yes. getting there, going on the hike, seeing the, uh, Missouri from the top of Bell Mountain, looking around, having a picnic, having something to eat and drink, mm -hmm. and then uh, doing your, your uh, three mile hike back. Yes. Uh, now, I, I was struck by the fact that the, we hit it there in the fall. Okay. And in the fall of the year, you actually have scenery that will equal anything in New England. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Let's get, uh, we're going to take a break and see a, a movie about what wilderness areas means to you, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Wilderness, 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 wilderness. 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 Mm-hmm. 
this to me is a bunch of plants, animals, and trees. It's just beautiful. Peaceful. Huh. Quiet. It's like a lot of plants. That are one big family. Ecosystem. Life. Best places that you can think of. Someone special in your life. I like the wilderness. Wilderness means to me pristine, untouched, beautiful, and restorative. These places are worth saving. So do your best to go out into wilderness areas and enjoy them. Now it's time to look to the future. How are we going to save the future of our wilderness areas? Since 1990, the Gateway Green Alliance has worked on environmental and social justice campaigns in St. Louis. The Gateway Greens have brought dedicated activists to speak at Black and Green Wednesday programs, the annual Pesto Feast, Martin Luther King Day, May Day, and Kwanzaa celebrations. The Gateway Green Alliance is best known for opposing genetically contaminated foods. We invite activists and scholars from around the world to participate in safe food action and bring their creative art. We need your support to keep going. Please send your $60 membership check or your $30 low-income check. Best of all, come to a Black and Green Wednesday program, 7.30 p.m. on the first Wednesday of the month at Legacy Books and Cafe. What if we were served a side of truth? I'll take a super bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Okay, that'll be meat from a pig who can't even turn around, an egg from a bird kept in a cage so small she can't spread her wings, and the milk of a cow whose calf is taken at birth to make veal. Ma'am? Hi, I'm host Don Fitz. We're talking about the 50th anniversary of wilderness areas in the United States. With me, I have a couple of speakers, a couple of guests who really know this area well. I have Richard Spiner, I have Tony Armstrong. Both of them are with the Sierra Club and have been active preserving the Alaska wilderness areas. Now, before the break, we were starting to say a little bit about some of the scenery mm -hmm. in Bell Mountain, which is probably the closest wilderness area to Missouri. And is that, and you were saying that it's sort of like New England in terms of the colors. Is that spring or fall? That well, again, that's in the fall, but in the spring you have uh, what I call spring green. You, know, uh -huh. you have just a wonderful kind of a yellowish, greenish color on there, and, and you're up at the top of this mountain with the vistas. It's really yeah. quite spectacular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. A another area that you mentioned was Rock Pile Mountain. Is, is that in the same general area, but a little bit further uh, down? To get to Rock Pile Mountain, so it's down near Fredericktown, near south, Frederick. south of right. Fredericktown, south of Fredericktown. Yeah, and um, and it's um, well different. And right now, it's a difficult area to hike in because there was a, a blowdown of trees, and so okay. you spend a lot of time scrambling over trees. Okay. Um, but um, but still. Uh, a gorgeous area and you know typical of the Rose, Ozarks lots of rock formations and the mountain itself has got rocks on it and nobody's quite sure how the rocks got there whether okay. it was early people or whether they were moved in um, by a lot of weather. speculation on that yeah yeah so, so so rock pile mountain might be an area that would be a challenge if you're not used to hiking a lot and climbing correct. over trees but if yes. you're used to hiking and you're used to obstacles and you it, obstacles in your path you might enjoy it. Yeah, but take a GPS. It's got a, a GPS because it's got a lot of intersecting trails. Oh, so you so, need a GPS to know. Yes. Or a topo you, map. Yes. Uh, okay, <clears throat> because you might end up spending a lot more time there than you yes. thought you would. Yes. Okay, so yeah. it sounds like Rock Pile might be a place for the experienced hiker. Correct. Uh, and it might not be something that you would want to go and just spend an hour there. Correct. The, forest, would, the, the Forest Service may be clearing some of those trees out now. Because yeah. okay. there was a tornado and high winds that came through southern Missouri and, and really knocked down a lot of trees, big trees. Okay, and that was early 2014 that that happened. 
I was, mm, was actually was several that. years ago. So, oh, years several ago. years ago. Yes. Yes. Okay, so it's it's a, yes. and, and of course trails don't just happen. Somebody right. has to build a trail, and yes. somebody has to take care of a trail. Right. So right. It, uh, if there's not enough funds, it might might be quite a while before right. that trail right. is uh, rehabbed. Okay, we're going to get to some other areas, but before we do, I wanted to ask you if a person wants to get more information about the wilderness areas in Missouri. How would you go about doing that? How would you find out what exists? Well, seven of the eight areas belong to the um, Forest Service. So it's the Mark Twain Forest. Um, probably the easiest thing to do is go, if you have access to the internet, is uh, Google Mark Twain National Forest Wilderness. Mark Twain National Forest Wilderness. wilderness. And they, okay. have a sep they have a page for each of the seven wilderness areas that are administered by the uh, Mark Twain. And then the eighth one, Mingo, is administered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and they also have info. So the Mingo's the one that we talked about before, which is by the Boot Hill. Correct. And so if you want that, what you need to do is to Google U.S. Yes. Fish and Wildlife Serve, Service. Service. U.S. F US Fish and Wildlife Service. You can actually go, Mingo. You can actually go to uh, Put down Mingo Wilderness and yeah. it'll, it'll take you. Oh, okay. Or just computer. the easiest thing to do yeah. is just right. type in Mingo yeah. Wilderness, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you should get the information about where it is and, right. and, and how to get. But, there. but go to go to the government sites because then they've got nice maps, they've got descriptions of the areas, and um, the kind of an ideal place to get okay. a lot of so, info. So that, that, that's some critical information. Now, one of the, the one of the places that you mentioned, you, know, you told me about during the break, was Hercules Glade. And you just started to tell me about that, and I realized I don't know what a glade is. What, what does that mean? So a glade is uh, something mm -hmm. unique, I think, in my mind, to the Midwest. Certainly Missouri has some gorgeous glades, but it's um, land where the rocks, limestone rocks, are very close to the surface, so the soil is very thin, and you grow just plants that can grow on these very rocky areas. So you're limited to the plant communities there. And then there's usually lots of uh, lizards. Um, we've got some endangered lizards here called the collared lizards that live there. Um, and then they're open areas. So you've got some wonderful vistas. So without having to climb a mountain like Bell Mountain, you can walk through these glades and have these gorgeous vistas. Oh, really? So, yeah. so it's, it's not a hike to the top of a mountain. No. It's, it's a hike, hike through. And there might be some ups and downs, but, no, but nothing like a, yeah. a top of the mountain hike. Yeah. And so yeah. you'll walk through the woods to these glades, and the glades could be from a few acres to several hundred acres. And you get to enjoy the views, and they're very hot and dry in the summertime. Um, and so then so you if, go you're, back if you're wood. going in the summer, it's a good idea to have a hat with a wide brim. W yes. would, would we say that? Yes. yes. And either you, you might want to take some sunscreen, or you might want to take, well, what, what I, my preference for hiking is to have a thin shirt mm -hmm. that, uh, and then I don't have to put as many, much of the sunscreen on, but that blocks, the, but, but you don't want to go out unprotected in Missouri sun and if you go to Hercules one, Glade, because you're gonna, you're gonna get the sun. One of the fun things about that area is you're walking along in the forest, and all of a sudden you have this opening, and you have this glade is there. Okay. And then you can walk again for maybe a half mile or two miles or whatever it happens to be, and then you have another area that opens up. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's an it's an experience from going from one to the other. It's not just one spot. Yeah. So you have a series of basically of scenic views. Okay. Now l let me ask you this: Is there uh, is there any uh, dangers in going and hiking through wilderness areas in Missouri? Is there? Um, no. I, I guess you could get bit by a copperhead. Well, or or I, rattlesnakes. When we were could. hiking in Rock Pile Mountain, we found a relatively large rattlesnake laying across the trail, sunning mm. itself. Um, so so you didn't get too close to it? No. no. Okay, so it's best if you see a rattlesnake just to sort of go around, around it. Yeah. Now, do, do you think it's a good idea if you're going hiking uh, to wear flip-flops? Or... <laughs> and you think that, that, that boots or, or tennis shoes might be a little bit better. Yeah, I, I personally like some support because, again, we've got a lot of rocks in Missouri, mm -hmm. and flip-flops are a little hard on your feet. But. They're, they're hard on your feet, and uh, it's, it's not a good idea to wear high heels either. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, uh, so, 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 so the thing is, if you're going on a hike, you really need to dress appropriate, think of what it's going to be. You need some foot support, and even though there's not a lot of venomous snakes in Missouri, I still want to wear something on my feet 
where yeah. nothing can come up and bite it very yeah. easily. And even in summer, you know, I usually wear long pants because yes. of, for, the, for the same reason. I, yeah. I've, I've never been bitten by a snake, but <laughs> it's, it's something that can always happen. Mm -hmm. And you'll see a lot of horseback riders. So if you're into horseback okay. riding and you've got a horse, then these wilderness areas are open to horseback riders. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I have seen, when yeah. I've hiked in Missouri, I have seen horseback mm -hmm. riders. Yeah. Now, now, one other place that you told me you thought was very interesting is called Paddy Creek. Paddy yeah. Creek, yes. Now, now wh where is that? Paddy Creek is over in, is below uh, Fort Leonard Wood, kind of put okay. an area around, south of Rolla, Missouri. South of Rolla, right. okay. So, so down again, the Paddy part Creek, of the state. it's not as far away as some of the places that are near uh, the 11 point. Correct. That's right. Okay. And it's, it's not as far as a lot of them are located near Branson and Table Rock Lake. Okay. So uh, places like uh, Hercules Glade. So mm -hmm. uh, you can go down into Paddy Creek. One of the things I liked about Cat Paddy Creek, it had a little bit of variety as far as the uh, foliage was concerned. Mm -hmm. We ran into some pine trees there and some really great overlooks. Oh, great. And uh, we have, you know, some wonderful bluffs that we hike along. Okay. And, and let me this, ask you this. We only have about a minute, minute and a half left, but are there any new places being considered for wilderness in Missouri? So there are a number of areas that those of us in the environmental community would like to have designated wilderness, uh, one being in the uh, um, owned um, down by the current river and as part of the management plan there is as Big Spring. Uh, yes. And so a there's been, I've been there many times. Yeah. A beautiful area. Yeah. And That's so there's an area around that, uh, a, quite a bit of acreage we'd like to have designated uh, wilderness. And then there's some others. Uh, probably my favorite of those is uh, Lower Rock Creek. Lower uh, Rock Creek, yes. is that near the 11 point also? It's near Fredericktown. Near, near Fredericktown. Fredericktown, okay. So there's actually seven proposed wilderness areas oh, in Missouri, but um, it needs an act of Congress to have something designated as wilderness. So Is Congress looking like it's going to go in that direction? Not right now. <laughs> Not right now. Okay, well, let's, let's hope for better things in the yes. future. Okay. Um, I want uh, to, to say that I've learned a lot. I mean, I knew about some about Missouri hiking areas, but I really have learned a lot about wilderness areas from talking with both of you. Uh, and I really hope that, you know, that viewers get a chance to look at these areas. And I, I really want to thank both of you for, for being on the show. Yes. It, it's been ex extremely helpful. I, I want to thank Tony Armstrong. I want to thank Richard Spiner, both with the Sierra Club. And I want to thank our viewers for tuning us in. And be sure to look at us this time next week.